Hi everyone and welcome to my tutorial on Mazars Etude Number no. 2. I like this etude very much. It's a very nice piece for solo violin. It has a lot of emotional contrasts in it and there are so many different bow techniques in it that you're doing a lot for your bow technique learning this etude. Now in the beginning we have quarter notes with accents. And the most important thing when you do those accents is to make sure that the down bow accents and the up bow accents sound the same. Because the down bow accents are easy because the frog is heavy, so we have a, a very heavy bow down here, so it's quite easy to do a strong accent. But it's more difficult up here where the bow is light, we need to add a lot of weight. So one has to be very careful that they actually sound the same. One way of practicing it is to play each note twice because then you can compare better if the accents sound the same. See, it didn't quite sound the same. to compare if you play each note twice or even several times. Now the next thing which is very helpful in this etude is to combine the accents that you do with your bow with vibrato accents because that's a very very good vibrato exercise because that way your left and right hand are doing the same thing so the strong accents that you're giving with your bow can support strong vibrato accents and it's a possibility of widening your vibrato that way. <laughs> with your bow to relax your arm and after you've given the accent with your vibrato to also relax your arm otherwise there's a danger that you tense up. To the string and also a good bow division so that you have a little more bow left in the end so that you can lead into the A that follows. The two little detaché notes it helps to practice them martily so that they have a strong articulation method and then when you do it up to speed the 16th notes are too fast to do martily but if you've practiced it martily you will get a good strong articulation and what follows, we have a change of character. We have a much more Deutsche character and the change of character happens in the 16th note run before the 8th note start. We have... Slightly 
slightly exaggerated. And the eighth notes are done in grand détaché. That's a large détaché with the half bow, so you have a very, very high speed of bow here. change of character. The next part is Martini. I use a harmonic for that high E because it whistles nicely and it sounds a bit longer than if I would play it as a stop note. Now for Martini, the most important thing is that typical martelly clicking at the beginning of each note. You get that by catching the string. Catching the string is done by adding a lot of weight over the hand position. You tilt your hand forward over the first finger of your right hand, add a lot of weight to the string, and you can tell you've caught the string if you can move it from side to side without the bow hairs moving. I don't know if it's visible on camera, difficult, it's just a small movement. If you can do that, you've caught the string. And as you start playing, you release. And you also release the weight off of the string, that's very important, otherwise you just get a scratch. So you add a lot of weight, and as you start moving the bow, you release. You see, I released so much that there was so little weight on the bow that it started bouncing a little bit. That's actually a good sign because when you actually play this up to speed, it won't bounce because you'll have a higher bow speed. So you have the catching of the string and that basically catapults the bow forward. Very important to release. Take all the weight off of the bow stick as soon as you start playing. slowly and then speed it up very gradually. Martelet has an upper speed limit because you need the time to catch the string. So basically you can't play Martelet extremely fast. You can only play it as fast as you are able to catch the string. The next bit, starting bar 27, are the quarter notes with accent again, same as in the beginning. strong emotional contrasts that he puts into this etude. First of all, we have quite big string crossings, which are done with the whole arm, simply because we have time to do them and we need a lot of power for the accents. contrast switch to a very dolce sound not very much weight on the string but a slightly lower point of contact a bit more bow speed and lots of vibrato and now we again have a totally different character that's Martelly again same as before, catch the string for each martelly note. Practice it very slowly. Even 
slower if you need to, if you're not that familiar with Marty Lee yet, then really give your yourself time to check on each note if you've caught the string by moving it from side to side without the bow hairs moving. It helps to practice it that slowly to be completely sure that you've caught the string and then speed it up very gradually. The next one is heavy spiccato at the frog. We need a lot of finger action from the right hand here. It's close to the frog. finger because when you're playing so close to the frog your fourth finger has to balance out the weight of the bow. We have strong contrasts in bowing here as from bar 84. We have first this dolce sound, then we have the strong martelli, then we have the heavy spiccato which is not as strong as martelli so that's to be seen as a bit of an echo or an answer. And then we have Martelli again. helps the left hand because the bow has to come to a standstill for Martelli otherwise you can't catch the string and that helps the left hand because the left hand has to be in place before the bow can play so you have Because the bow has to come to a standstill so you're teaching yourself that the left hand has to move before the right hand so that bit in Martelli is actually very helpful for the left hand as well give yourself time to practice it slowly make sure you always catch the string for Martelli and then only speed it up very gradually quite such a hard martelli, more of a portato. The next bit, starting bar 42. He doesn't explicitly write martelli here which he does in the other Martelli bits and it's not a pure Martelli because we don't have the typical clicking sound but practice it Martelli and then soften the bow so practice then when you do it up to speed basically just do a sloppy martelli without the perfect click at the beginning of each note and then you get the articulation which is needed and we again have a strong emotional contrast. And then we have the same as we had in the 
beginning again. What we have here is a very sudden, very slow bow speed. It's very helpful to save a lot of bow at the beginning. Try to pull your bow as slow as you can so that you have lots of bow left at the end to lead into the next note. If you have plenty of bow left because you save a lot in the beginning, then you can bring out the sostenuto more. You've got a bit of space in your bow to have a bit of time, which is musically very nice here. Of course, only save the bow, pull it as slow as it still sounds good. It always has to sound. Everything always has to sound. <laughs> lead into the recapitulation of the beginning. it has to balance out the bow it's carrying nearly the whole bow weight and keep your bow on the string quite a long time don't do that doesn't sound so you want a heavy spiccato it's not really a true spiccato it's like an enlarged spiccato where you have the bow on the string for a long time Down bows. Do the down bows with your wrist. That's from bar 56. He writes little decrescendos on each dotted figure. that because as you noticed if one does those little decrescendos in that manner basically the 16th note gets swallowed particularly if you do it in tempo and then all you could hear is so what we have to do to be able to do the decrescendo we have to put an accent on each dotted eighth note and we have to give a little bit of a kick with the bow for the 16th note so that it's well articulated. Practice it in this manner. Stopping the bow before the 16th note. articulated 16th note and now what you do is you just do less of that and put more of an accent onto the dotted 8th note and then you get the decrescendo and you'll still have an articulated 16th note. That's the only way to play that bit without losing the 16th note. Now what follows is Martelli again. So there again, practice it 
slowly catching the string. Use lots of bow for that E and then speed it up gradually, always making sure that you're still catching the strings of the martinet has the typical clicking noise. And now for the chord, use lots of bow. Be careful with chords not to be tempted to press more or put more weight on the string, that will only scratch. On the contrary, you have to take weight away as soon as you land on the higher strings. So think of the chord as two double stops slurred. And when you do that faster, as soon as you get even faster, as soon as you get onto the higher strings, flatten your knuckles and speed up your bow speed so that not too much weight comes onto the E string. Otherwise you have and that doesn't sound. So as soon as you get onto the higher strings, you flatten your knuckle and speed up the bow. And then the chord sounds. And then we have There I would also again articulate it very strongly, nearly martelly. because we have the pew dolce there, and to have the contrast as strong as possible, I would make a very strong articulation for the first bit, which is forte, and then exaggerate the dolce a little bit so that we have a strong contrast. And now very dolce. You get that, again, by using lots of vibrato, lots of bow speed, not too much weight, and soften the articulation. We have a very hard articulation first. And now soften it. And then contrast again, same character as you had before when you had the hard articulation, forte. I particularly like the way he ends this because you have the strong articulation, then we have the softening in the dolce, and then he ends it with strength again. I really like that very much and it's nice if one exaggerates that a little bit to bring out the contrast. Lots of fun to play. I really like this etude. I hope you enjoy this etude as much as I did and I hope you get a lot for your bow technique out of this. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and happy practicing.